السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله القائل وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم ان الذين يستكبروا عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله وتزودوا فان خير الزاد التقوى قال الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون جميع المسلمين بسم الله Let us have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its truest sense with full submission and obedience in performing all of his command and avoiding all of his provision. May we all become among those having the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attaining salvation and success in this world and the hereafter. So today I will expound on the khutbah entitled Supplication or Dua. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Supplicating is a form of ibadah. Supplication refers to the pleading of a slave or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his or her well-being in this world and the hereafter. It is accompanied with earnest effort and full endeavor. Supplication is not bounded by time and place. One can supplicate at any time, whether day or night, and anywhere, whether on land, in the air, or at the sea. Similarly, whether one is in travel or not, whether rich or poor, and wealthy, and whether healthy or sick. Those who will always supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a regular practice, truly it is a manifestation of their nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in verse 186, 186 of Surah Al-Baqarah which mean and when my slave asks you O Muhammad concerning me then answer them I am indeed near to them by my knowledge I respond to the evocation of the supplicant when he calls on me without any mediator or intercessor Dear Muslim blessed by Allah and making a dua or supplication is a command from Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we supplicate to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it means that we are fulfilling the command of Allah and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned in verse 55 of Surah Al-A'raf, A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim, Udu'u Rabbakum Tadarru'a Wa Khufya, Innahu La Yuhibbu Al-Muqtadeen which means invoke your Lord with humility and in secret. He likes not the aggressor. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had informed us that the weakest people among mankind are those that do not make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was mentioned from the narration of Abu Hurairah radiallahu an that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna abkhala nasi man bakhila bis salam وَعَجَزَ النَّاسِ مَنْ عَجَزَ عَنِ الدُّعَى which means indeed the one who is most misery misery that those are those that are stinging in spreading the salah and the most incapable people are those having the inability to supplicate in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are all needy while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of all need and the giver Beseeching Allah, the most merciful, is not the same as asking from human from whom are underprivileged. Human will become angry if they are repeatedly asked for aid or help. A person who supplicates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never be disappointed. On the authority of Salman al-Farisi radiallahu an, who said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, which is indeed Allah is hey, generous, when a man raises his hand to him, he feels too shy to return them to him empty and rejected. Dear Muslim, blessed by Allah. <clears throat> Supplicating is from the practice of the prophets and messengers, السلام, from Prophet Adam السلام, to our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who would always supplicate and seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Supplication that is deemed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as ibadah refers to the zikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa taala. A person who supplicating is actually engaging the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa taala. It has its own unique virtues. Among them, is earning the same benefit even though the du'a is made for one Muslim brethren. Supplicating will also save us from any type of calamity, which include those uttering amin to the supplication. For example, it is narrated in Sahih Muslim that once there were three men um, that was trapped in a cave and they successfully escaped safely after supplicating and making tawassul through the righteous deed that they had done. The story mentioned by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated by Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu uh, shows the power and miracle of supplicating which is a virtue from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not just that the virtue of supplicating will also bring benefit to those that have passed away which is benefit of reward for the believers that have passed away resulting from the supplication of other believers that are still living Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in verse 10 of Surah Al-Hajj A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُنَا رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِأَخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا بِلَّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Which means, and those who came after them say, Our Lord, forgive us and our brethren who have preceded us in faith and put not in our heart any hatred against those who believe who have believed, our Lord, you are indeed full of kindness, most merciful. Dear Muslim, blessed by Allah. 
in raping the virtues of supplicating as mentioned, those making supplication must observe an etiquette recommended by the Shah. Among those etiquettes are, first, sincerity and certainty while supplicating. The one making dua must have sincerity and certainty upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not feeling doubtful about it being accepted or rejected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in verse 16 Surah Al-Ghafir, A'uz billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, wa qala rabbukum ad'uni astajib lakum, inna al-ladhina yastakbiruna an ibadati sayadakhuluna jahannam ad-dakhirin. Which means, and your Lord says, call upon me, I will respond to you. Indeed, those who disdain my worship will enter hell contemptible. Second, repent and return to Allah. The one who wants to supplicate must make a tawbah, repentance, by increasing his tawfah, seeking forgiveness. This is because disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a major obstacle for the acceptance of dua. Prophet Nuh alayhi salam had asked, these people to repent to Allah so that their prayers will be accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in verse 10 to 12 of Surah Nuh, which means, and said, Ask forgiveness of your Lord. He is never a perpetual forgiver. He, he is ever a perpetual, perpetual forgiver. He will send rain from the sky upon you on, in continuing showers and give you increase in wealth and children and provide for, for you gardens and provide for you rivers. Third, having full concentration in fervent hope. One must suffocate with khushu, which is concentration, deep earnestness and high hope. For it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone who can accept and answer supplication. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has explained that the supplication that we make will get one of three things. It was narrated from Abu Sa'id al-Khudri that the Prophet وسلم, said, There is no Muslim who called upon his Lord with a dua in which there is no sin or severing of family ties. But Allah will give him one of three things. Either he will answer his prayer quickly or he will store the reward for it in the hereafter or he will divert and quell villain evil away from him. Dear brothers and sisters, so in concluding the khutbah today, I would like to sincerely remind ourselves with the following matters. Number one, the Muslim Ummah must supplicate and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with absolute certainty and sincerity. Number two, the Muslim Ummah must strive and endeavor as well as continuously supplicating before placing reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and preserving its etiquettes so as to ensure that they are answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, the Muslim Ummah is highly recommended to increase in their supplication, whether facing difficulties or at ease, impoverished or wealthy, for dua is worship, which is ibadah, and they can members of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا تفسدوا في الأرض بعد إسلاحها ودعوا حوفا وطمعا إن رحمة الله قريب من المحسنين and cause not corruption upon the earth after its reformation and invoke him in fear and aspiration indeed the mercy of Allah is near to the doors of good بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم وتقبل مني ومنكم تلاوته إنه هو السميع العليم أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروا إنه هو غفور رحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل من المسلمين ورزقنا من الطيبات أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله فقد فاز تقول Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, I would like to remind all of us to always have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that Islam teaches to remain moderate in every action and deed. As Muslim, we are to manifest noble akhlaq, having utmost personality and attitude for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to perfect akhlaq and as mercy for the entire mankind and the world. Therefore, let us increase our salawat. السلام عليكم رفيع محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيد المرسلين ورد الله من أصحابه وقرابته وأزواجه وذريته أجمعين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ويقاضي الحاجات اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من صاختك والنار اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب أفواف فعنا والوالدين وأن جميع المسلمين والمسلمات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اغفر لنا ولأخواننا الذين سبقون بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غل للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عيون وجعلنا للمتكين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإنتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم ما يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم واسألوه من فضله يعطيكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة